Eagles, led by the incredible Norm Van Brocklin, won their last NFL championship, defeating the Green Bay Packers. In 1980, Dick Vermeil, riding the rifled arm of Ron Jaworski, took the Eagles to Super Bowl 15, but lost in their bid for the championship. Today, Coach Buddy Ryan starts a new season with the gifted Randall Cunningham, as they hope it will bring Philadelphia their first championship in 29 years. And Coach Chuck Knox comes in with the Seahawks, hoping to reestablish ground shot with a return to form of running back Kurt Warner. NBC Sports presents the National Football League. Today, it's the Seattle Seahawks versus the Philadelphia Eagles. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Veterans Stadium. Along with Paul McGuire, I'm Joel Myers. And on a very, very warm afternoon, it's the opening of the NFL season. 93 degrees currently. Just about an hour ago, they took the temperature down on the AstroTurf, and it was 120 degrees on the surface of Veterans Stadium. Wind should not be a factor. Humidity, just about 50%, so a very warm, muggy afternoon. And with this being the opening game of the season, fatigue could be a factor down the stretch. Chuck Knox, in his seventh season as the head coach of the Seattle Seahawks, his 17th season in the NFL. And Buddy Ryan starts his fourth year as the leader of the Philadelphia Eagles. So much expected, of course, of Philadelphia after that 10-6 record last year, the winners of the NFC Eastern Division title. We're ready to go. Luis Endejas has it teed up. And we're underway from Veteran Stadium. Higgs, along with Keith Sherman, back deep. And it's going to be James Jefferson as opposed to Higgs back there. Jefferson on the return across the 30, out to the 32-yard line. So that's where the Seahawks will put it into play as they won the opening toss. The offensive line, that rookie, it was a three-year tight end at Notre Dame, Andy Heck. He started his final season for the Fighting Irish. This is the offensive tackle. First-round draft choice. Heck, Bailey, Fiesel, Millard, and Wilson on the offensive line for Seattle. In the backfield, Craig with Williams and Warner and the wide receivers, Blades and Largent with the tight end. In his first year, Robert Tyler. They come out in the eye, first and 10. The Seahawks own 32-yard line. pressure back at the 28-yard line. Byron Evans, the first one in there, forcing Craig down for the sack. And this is the way they look in their shotgun when they go with four wideouts like we just saw, Paul. They go with Scancy, Blades, Largent, and Clark, with each single set being John L. Williams. I think the interesting thing talking the other day with Craig is the fact that not knowing what his tight ends are going to do because they're all basically new people. Second and 14. Ball at the 28-yard line. Again, they'll work out of the shotgun with Largent in motion. The dump off doesn't go anywhere as Scancy has it. Only to the 30. Seth Joyner all over Paul Scancy. Let's look at the Philadelphia Eagles defensive front four now. They say he's the most awesome in the NFL. You won't get an argument here. Reggie White, the left end, joined up front by Pitts, Brown, and Simmons. The linebacking core, Joyner, Evans, and Harris. And the secondary, Jenkins, Allen, Bell, and Hopkins. First third down of the day. It's third and a dozen. Four wide receivers once again with Williams. The only one back there with Craig. Nine men on the defensive front. Dump off. Ball's incomplete. Looking for Scancy again. And it was Wes Hopkins up on his back, along with Izell Jenkins. That time, what, what Philadelphia did is they ran a safety blitz with William Frizzle, Frizzell, excuse me, number 33. And what, what happens in that case is now Reggie White is being blocked one-on-one -on -one by the center Fiesel, and that's tough duty. Got a feeling this is exactly what Buddy Ryan wanted, was his defense on the field first. And now, it's Henry Gizmo Williams back deep, waiting for the punt from Ruben Rodriguez. The Seahawks last year had the best punt coverage in the NFL. Flags on the play. Good hang times. It's over the head of Williams. Will it roll in? Yes. 
It'll be a touchback, but let's see what the penalty's all about. Back at the line of scrimmage, a 70-yard punt by Ruben Rodriguez. Our referee today is Gordon McCarter. Discussing it now with the line judge, Ron Baines. Procedure. They'll do it one more time, and they'll bring it all back. Well, Henry Gizmo Williams misjudged the punt. He didn't realize that Rodriguez could kick the ball that far, and he was just up too close. He did the smart thing. He didn't go back and try to get the ball. 21 on the kicking team, five-yard penalty, repeat fourth down. Paul Moyer, the guilty party on the special teams for the Seattle Seahawks. And got to feel he's got some butterflies as well. Gizmo Williams named Gizmo by Reggie White because he remember he resembles that character in the movie Gremlins. Well, you know, and everybody talks about the fact that he didn't fair catch any any punts in Canada. Well, you can't. You're not allowed. You have to return the punt. But I guarantee you this time, now he's back at the 25-yard line, and he's some 55 yards away. One thing you won't have to worry about this year, he takes one to the goal line and return it. It's blocked. Inside the five, it was blocked by Andre Waters. The Eagles have it first and goal inside the five, down around the two. And coming up with the ball, Jesse Small, the rookie outside linebacker. Joel, when you see Waters coming in from the left-hand side, number 20, watch where he goes. To the inside, the only place you can block the punt is about two or three yards in front of the punter because he takes two steps. When he comes, you'll see it better right here. Waters will come right in front on the foot, makes the block. Just perfect timing by the defenseman. Well, penalties, Paul, don't fall into the category of turnovers, but that one, a big turnover. Exactly. You know, they had the ball. Philadelphia would have had the ball at the 20-yard line. Now they get the ball at the one-yard line. They come out to... Uh... Triple tight end formation on first and goal. Tony up the middle. Is he in? He stopped just short of the goal line on first and goal. What a what a obvious change in what we expected coming over, Paul, because so often you hear about the Seahawks and Rusty Tillman, their special teams coach. And it was the Eagles that came up with a big play on their special teams. And it was just a missed block on the outside. You must stay with the speedy guys that are coming from the outside. Usually, usually. Now, Robinson was the man that missed the block, but usually that outside guy doesn't have enough time to get there. Three tight ends in there again. Byers and Tony in the backfield on second and goal. Tony over the top. Not in there yet. It looked like Vernon Maxwell stopped the charge. Joel, watch it. the defensive line. They get underneath the offensive line. When that happens, that means that Tony, number 25, must go over the top. When he tries to do that, there is no place to go. Bosworth, number 55, is just sitting there waiting for him to come up over the top to make the play. The offensive line cannot let the defensive line get underneath them. Third and goal inside the one. Same tandem with the backfield behind Randall Cunningham. And it's the pitch to Tony. He's in. Touchdown, Eagles. Turnover is converted by Philadelphia. Anthony Tony, his fourth year from Texas A&M, and those aren't boos you hear in the background now, cascading down from Veteran Stadium. They are singing Louis in the background for Luis Zendejas, who's on the field for the point after try. He'll go out of the hold of the punter, John Telchik. It's perfect. The Eagles take the lead, capitalizing on the block punt. Joel, when you take a look, you see Tamarillo here. He's going to come out, and they're going to get another block right here by the by the fullback. And when that happens, they don't really get a big piece of a man. All they have to do is get a small piece. And they'll be coming out in this direction here, and Tony will be coming right behind him. Tamarillo comes out. Now, watch. He's not really going to get much of a block. But all he has to do is, at this point right here, just get a piece where Tony can cut back into the inside. Another look from the ground level, Paul. Well, Tamarillo is actually the only man that's coming out, number 61. When he does, Tony knows enough. I'm going to just stay behind the big guy. If he can get into the end zone, I sure can. Anthony Tony 
with the touchdown. What a turnaround after his 70-yard punt was brought back on the flag against Seattle. Remember when we were talking to Buddy Ryan the other day, and Buddy said one thing. He said, I, he said I'm talking to you, and he said, I'd love to have my defense on the field first. Exactly. He wanted to set the tempo today with his defense, and he also mentioned to us in a meeting with Buddy Ryan yesterday, he thought special teams would be the difference in the game. Well, that's what beat him a year ago, and he, they remember that the special teams, and you notice what he did at the beginning of this game? He introduced the special teams. He did not introduce the offense nor the defense. Exactly right. Chuck Knox probably talking over that penalty. It cost his team a punt and field position. And now Zendejas ready to kick it off to Seattle once again. It'll be James Jefferson back deep, along with Lewis Clark. Zendejas booms away a beauty. Jefferson won't bring this one out. It'll be first and 10 for Seahawks at the 20, and at least in the early going, all the momentum in the direction of Philadelphia. Let's look at that block punt one more time. All right, Joel, out here is Waters. Now, Waters is going to come right in through here, but he goes right in front of the kicker. You can't go behind him or right up next to him, and you're going to see him take the inside. Robinson has two people on him. He tries to get a piece of Waters coming here, but then you see Waters right in front of the kicker, the only place to block it. First and 10 for the Seahawks, their own 20-yard line. John L. Williamson, Kurt Warner in the backfield. Eight-man defensive front for Philadelphia. Warner stacked up at the original line, falls forward for a yard. It is so tough to run against that 46 defense. It's tough to run against the 46 defense, and, and we're going to hear Reggie White's name all day long, and we're going to talk about him. But I think, you know, with a guy like Reggie White, and every coach in the league will tell you he's the best defensive lineman in the league, number 92. But he makes Pitts and Brown and Simmons so much better. When you have guys that they only can put one man on the block, they're going to release and make the plays. Reggie may not make a lot of plays, but he'll set up a lot of plays. On second and nine, they go to the gun, the shotgun, with four wide receivers. Williams, the only one in the backfield. Looking for larger on the play in the offensive backfield on the incompletion as Andre Waters was providing the coverage. It's not so much providing the coverage, Andre Waters, because Largent was open for a moment. The problem is that you've got Reggie White coming up in Craig's face all the time. And when that happens and his arms are up, it's very difficult to see the man downfield. Waters did have pretty good coverage, but Largent was open. Holding, number 54, offense. Defensive holding, number 96, defense. Penalties offset, repeat second down. Offsetting penalties, they'll play it over. All right, when you see large at number 80 coming down, and Waters is to the inside on. Now watch, for just a second here, see large and is open. But the problem is that the ball had to be thrown too fast by Craig. All right, here's Reggie White. Now, the blocking is one-on-one. -on -one. Wiesel has got him up in, in there. But you see the guys are sitting in his face. Pitts number 74 is there. And when you can't see the receiver, it's hard to throw the ball to him. Second and nine all over again for the Seahawks. At their own 21-yard line, Simmons jumped. Flags up into the air. They complete it across the 30. They get it out to Brian Blades. Good enough for the first down, but let's find out if it was the... Eagles jumping off, or they were drawn off by Seattle's offensive line. Eagles offside. It'll be the first first down of the day for the Seattle offside, Seahawks. Number 96 defense, penalty decline, first down. All right, Joel, we've seen the pass play so far. Okay, David Craig, and they told us yesterday, they're going to have to shorten up the routes. Blades, a little slant in, nine-yard slant in play. The one they just threw the play before to Largent was about an eight-yard pass pattern because they just don't have the time. They don't have the personnel to block eight people. First and ten for Seattle outside their own 30. Single to each side. They're split. Warner and Williams in the backfield. It'll be Williams. Across the 35. He's up near the 36. Wrapped up by the middle linebacker, Byron Evans. 
All right, Joel. When, when you see this eight-man front, you're, you see four down linemen, but then all of a sudden these guys are all filling the gap, and you've got linebackers in there. Everybody has a gap to fill. But when you do that, you now have to... They don't for, forget totally about the quarterback because he doesn't count in the 11. He's not blocking anyone. When that happens, then all of a sudden, you see the defensive linebacker, which is Evans, make the play. They got five on the carry from Williams. It brings up second and five outside the 35. And Elroy Harris, the new running back, as Kurt Warner hobbled off the field. It's Largent in motion. Harris, first carry of the day. Breaks tackles for a first down across the 40. He's got it to the Seattle 42-yard line where he's tripped up by the strong safety Todd Bell. While we were looking at the telestrator, Paul, Kurt Warner left the field holding on to his upper thigh. He's back. He's back into the game now. Elroy Harris, the all-time leading rusher at Eastern Kentucky. Joel, they're just trying to get a break. As you said before, it was 120 degrees about an hour and a half before kickoff on the field. He could have cramped up a little. That's maybe why he had to leave the field. First and 10 Seattle, their own 42-yard line. Warner and Williams in the backfield. Dump off to Williams to the 45-yard line. Good open field tackle for Philadelphia. And Al Harris, the former Chicago Bear. He'd been with the Bears since 1979. 10th year out of Arizona State. John L. Williams, 58 catches out of the backfield. And when we discussed the offense with Dave Craig yesterday, he said that Williams would rather catch the ball than take it on a straight handoff. And Philadelphia will give you that short three-yard pattern all day long. Second and seven with the ball at the 45-yard line. Joyner jumping off, flags into the air. We'd like to welcome those of you joining us from the Bengals-Bears game, where this afternoon the Bears beat the Bengals by a field goal. I'm Joel Myers, along with Paul McGuire. We're at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia, where the Eagles already have a 7-0 lead. Seahawks have the ball, and right now are discussing what appeared to be an offside call against Seth Joyner, the left side linebacker. The other problem was that Brian Millard, number 71, he jumped before the ball was snapped. Now the question is, are they going to call double fouls? There's Millard. You see Joyner there and Millard, both of them moving. Pass right down on the offense. He cleared out and the pass to Flinching. The defense calls the movement, but the charge is against the offense. The defense is warned for the balance of the game. They can't repeat that same act. Now, are you straightened out, Mr. McGuire? Totally. I have no <laughs> idea what he's talking about. Joiner's not allowed to intimidate him anymore. <laughs> I thought that's what defense was all about. Intimidate the offense as much as possible. So Seattle gets a penalty, and Philadelphia gets a warning. And don't taunt them anymore. <laughs> that's right. I love that. It'll be Look second down. Chuck Knox Repeated. is totally upset. They take it back to the 40-yard line. I think that's the first time he's seen that kind of call as well. That's rule 1174D on page 112. If that falls moving. just behind the new noise rule. Yeah. <laughs> it's second and 12. The ball at the Seattle 40-yard line. Craig working with four wide receivers and Steve Largent in motion. Side kick to John Williams. No blocking out in front. It's Sammy Lilly forcing him out. The good lateral pursuit pushes him out across the 42 near the 43 yard line. We're going to bring up third and long. They run a play to, to Williams out of the shotgun, and you run it to Reggie White's side, who has tremendous speed. Lilly makes a super play as, as the nickelback or the dimeback in that case because of Reggie White forces Williams way to the outside. Big third down for Seattle with all the momentum going the way of the Philadelphia Eagles. Again out of the shotgun with four wide receivers. It's third and a long nine. Swings it off to Blades, and it's knocked away. 
Eric Allen, the cornerback, making the play in the secondary. Yeah, but Joel, the guy that messed everything up was Lilly, number 37, again being in the backfield and being in the face. You'll see Lilly right there going out. All right, here comes Blaze to the inside. Look at how fast this ball had to get there. Besides, the ball was behind him at the time. But the man who really makes the play is Lilly, number 37, the defensive back who had the blitz on. For those of you that just joined us from the Bears-Bengals game, the Seahawks had a block punt recovered at the two. And that's how the Philadelphia Eagles scored their only touchdown so far on a one-yard run by Tony. Williams back deep. Rodriguez gets into this one and hangs up a beauty. Williams will take it back at the 12. Across the 15. When we come back, the Eagles will have it. First and 10 at their own 16-yard line. So crisp and clean, so refreshing, it's the king of beers. This bud, this bud, this bud's for you. From ancient times, astronomers have defined an eclipse as the passage of a celestial body between the observer and the sun. Today, an eclipse is the passage of a celestial body with the observer in it. For personal exhilaration, an eclipse an eclipse, an eclipse. My athlete's foot kept flaring up. I'd put it out and it'd just flare up again. Then my doctor told me about Tenactin. It cures recurring athlete's foot. Use it regularly and it'll keep the fire from coming back. Tenactin puts the fire out for good. The Allstate Anti-Lock Brake Discount is a great opportunity to save money. Provided your car has anti-lock brakes, the anti-lock brake discount. Don't pass it up. The Philadelphia Eagles with a 7-0 lead over the Seattle Seahawks, and welcome back to Veterans Stadium once again. Along with Paul McGuire, I'm Joel Myers, and the special teams coming up big in the early going for the Eagles. Now their offense finally on the field for what could be a very long drive. I've been waiting a long time to watch Randall Cunningham throw the ball. He hadn't thrown the ball because we had three running plays down there to get the touchdown. They were at the one-yard line. Interesting thing, though. It took them three plays to get in. Exactly. So the Seattle Seahawks getting their defense on the field as the give goes to Tony. Weaving his way across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Let's look again at that block punt that led to the touchdown. All right, on his block punt, Waters is going to come from the left-hand side. And again, to repeat, because this is the only place to really block it, is coming from the outside and then coming right in front of the kicker. Kicker takes two steps, three steps, and it's four yards in front, perfect position. Eagles get five on the carry from Tony. Mike quick in motion on second and five outside their own 21. There goes their leading rusher. Only gets a couple to the 23-yard line. Randall Cunningham has led the Eagles in rushing in each of the last two seasons. Let's look at his supporting cast. First of all, the offensive line for the Philadelphia Eagles. Darwin, Mike Schott, a former member of the Los Angeles Rams, David Alexander. And of the backfield, Byers and Tony. With the wideouts, Quick Carter and the tight end, Keith Jackson. Third and a long three. Ball at the 23-yard line. They send the tight end, Keith Jackson, in motion. Cunningham works from the shotgun. Up and out for Carter. It's incomplete. It was thrown short. Joel, the one thing about Philadelphia, they're going to punt now, but when they go into what they call their shotgun formation, they use the same personnel. They don't take Keith Jackson out, nor do they take Keith Byers out. The 11 men they start with are the 11 men they go with in the shotgun. And interesting because Buddy Ryan said, hey, the reason I don't change is those 11 guys are my best and 11 players on offense. I don't need to put a third stringer in there to catch a pass. Telchik in for his first punt, and it'll be James Jefferson. 
Just like Gizmo Williams of the Eagles, another one that played in the CFL the last three years. Telchik hangs out on Beauty, gets it to turn over. It'll be Jefferson at the 23. Joel and Lilly to stop, popped his knee, and he's down at about the 28-yard line. Exactly. Never made the play. It looked like the turf caught his foot and held it, and he just went right to his knee. That hurt from here, Paul. We'll be right back to Veterans Stadium as they attend the defensive back, Sammy Lilly. Eagles lead it by seven. The writers of Motor Trend magazine road tested a lot of cars before the Mitsubishi Galant. They road tested a lot of cars after it. But no other car was so well conceived, so well crafted, so thoroughly satisfying to drive. And that is why they marked the occasion in the most significant way they could. They named the Mitsubishi Galant Motor Trend Import Car of the Year. It's the right beer now. But not now. It's the right beer now. Definitely not now. Cool like it's the right beer now. And absolutely, positively not now. No way. Hey, Dave, let me give you a ride home. We recognize how important every 800 caller is to your business. We recognize that. And if for some reason there's a disruption in that service, we know you can't afford to be out of business. We have a new AT&T 800 assurance policy. If you're not getting 800 calls for any reason, if it's an equipment failure, if it's a problem with the network, it doesn't matter to us. What matters to us is getting your calls to you. We guarantee we'll put you back in service to a working telephone line within an hour. That's what the assurance policy does for you. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By Mitsubishi Motors, who invite you to come see the full line of cars and trucks. Mitsubishi, suddenly the obvious choice. And by U.S. Navy. You are tomorrow. You are the Navy. Welcome back to Veterans Stadium on a very warm, muggy afternoon. And here's Jefferson as Lilly goes down. All right, Jefferson has got, has got the ball. Now, Lilly, look at his left leg. And he gets it right here. Take a look at it. And he, and he hooks it up on the pitcher's mount. The leg just pops, and right away he grabs his leg. There's a piece of material that goes in there to cover up the dirt. And that's what he got caught on. First comes in Seattle. Second time they've had the ball off. Here goes to Williams. Reggie White, the Minister of Defense. He's a licensed Baptist minister. Now, what a treat he is to deal with. What a fine gentleman. <laughs> he is. Now, you're going to watch Reggie White, number 92. The thing about Reggie, Beasel is the center. Watch this. He gets rid of him, and look at his pursuit down the line. That tackle was made right at the line of scrimmage for no gain. They go to the shotgun already. We've seen this regularly now from the Seahawks in the early going. Go into the shotgun on second down. It's second and ten. for Blades and a penalty flag down to the play. Came from the back judge. Wes Hopkins was defending. I'm going to tell you, I was st just sitting there watching Reggie White again. And it's on Wes Hopkins, but Joel, that time Reggie, Reggie White was in the face again. Now you've got Wes Hopkins is blocking on Largent. The ball wasn't thrown to him. It was thrown to Blades. Usually it's got to be a catchable one. Yeah, but it <laughs> can't be catchable if they don't throw it to That's you. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> Take a look at it here. Here comes Wes Hopkins. He's hitting. The ball was not thrown to Largent. It was thrown to Blades who just came into your picture. Water and Williams in the backfield with Largent in motion. First and 10 across the 41. Water slammed down across the 45 near the 46-yard line. A gain of about four. 
Seth Joyner there, the left side linebacker. They're expecting big things this year out of Seth Joyner. Kurt Warner, only a Seattle player to go for better than a thousand yards in a season. And many thought after his brilliant rookie campaign that he'd never make it back from that severe knee injury he suffered early in his second season. And he is 100%. They're not worried about it. He didn't have a lot of activity in the preseason, though. He missed most of the preseason. Only got into the last game due to arthroscopic surgery on that same knee. Second and six. John L. Williams. Meet Mr. Reggie White. And a flag in the defensive backfield again. It's, it's Evans and White, but the pursuit of this Philadelphia defense, it looks like there is a hole. Then all of a sudden it closes. Reggie White, 92. He gets off the center feasel, slides down the line. Here comes Evans, 56. Taking them both there. Penalty goes against the Philadelphia Eagles. It nullifies that outstanding play by Reggie White. And for the first time this afternoon, the Seahawks have the ball in Eagle territory down to the 37-yard line, where it'll be first and 10. The intimidation factor, though, of this 46 defense actually seems to be getting to Craig even more than the pressure in the pocket. He seems to be concerned with it so much mentally he that was he's yesterday. releasing early. He was yesterday, and the guys he's concerned with is 92, Reggie White. Play action on first and ten. Going deep. Looking for blades in the end zone. Working on Eric Allen. It falls incomplete. We got there's another flag, flag on the play. Again around the linebackers. Well, I think there's a legal man downfield, and I think it's got to be Mike Wilson, number 75, because that flag was thrown awfully late. But when you, took, when you take a look at the defensive back, Allen and Blades down in the end zone, both guys lost the ball in the sun. The sun is directly in their eyes. It is a move on field, number 75 offense, 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. Now when you look downfield, you have Allen and Blades, and, and Allen doesn't, he loses the ball totally, Blades does also, it's, it's in, in the sun's in their eyes. Just watch what happens with Allen. He's gonna turn around because he can't find the ball. He can't see it in the air, and Blades just at the last second. It comes into view, but he can't get his hands on it. Shadows are taking effect at the opposite end of the field, but into the end zone the Seahawks are moving towards now. That's the sun portion of the field. It's first and 20 at the Philadelphia 47-yard line. Dump off to Williams. Beats the linebacker. And then it was taken down to the 35-yard line as he got past Al Harris initially. Seth Joyner making the stop along with Eric Allen. He is so difficult to bring down to the open field because he's such a compact package. Now you know why when they were talking, they wanted what Craig was saying, I'd love to get him the ball in the flat because he can make that first man miss. And that play ended up with a 12-yard gain. Only other player than Largent to come up with more than 40 receptions. Wasn't it interesting what Largent said? When you ask him about what it was bothering him not to catch a pass in every game, he said, if I'm a starter, I better catch a pass. That's the bottom line. About it. Movement, flags, and John L. Williams inside the 30. Near the first down marker. He's down to the 28 of Philadelphia. Short of the first down by a yard. But I think they'll take the penalty because Philadelphia was offside on the play. And it'll give them an extra down. If they take the ball there, it'll be third and about one and a half. But if they take the penalty, it'll be second down and about three. Option belongs to Largent and the Seahawks. Let's check in with our referee, Gordon McCarter. Offside, number 59, defense, five yard penalty, repeat second down. Right in front of us, Seth Joyner. Jumping off in his fourth year out of the University of Texas, El Paso. So they'll take the down over. It'll be second and short, second a little bit better than three. Penalties fairly close in the early going. You'd expect a lot of flags, though, in the first couple of weeks of the season. You would, I would. I know <laughs> Buddy Ryan and Chuck Knox don't. <laughs> That's what they have preseason for, to work it out. Second and three with the ball at the 30. Archie in motion. To Kurt Warner. 
Inside the 25, he's got more than enough of the first down, down to the 23. And the way that offensive line is working right now, it looks like the backs are just waiting as opposed to exploding. They're waiting for the offensive line to slide and look for those gaps in the openings. Well, that's what you basically have to do against that, the 46 defense is kind of slide down the line and, and basically take the guy whichever way he wants to go. Because if you take a look at this pursuing defense, what they do is they slide along the line of scrimmage. When they're doing that, it gives the offensive man a, a chance to get an angle at him. So far for the Seahawks, they've got it first and 10 at the Eagles 23 yard line. Looking for large and he's got it and it's a touchdown for the Seahawks. Beat the double coverage of Wes Hopkins and Eric Allen. And now he is only one touchdown away from tying Don Hudson's all time record. You know, I, I'm just wondering again if if the defensive back Allen loses the ball. Here comes Large and he's down on Allen. Wes Hopkins, Hopkins is going to come in. But the question is now, did he lose the ball? Hopkins comes in and knocks Allen off. But I think that, that, that Allen, actually number 21, lost the ball in the sun. Good pass, right on target. Normally Jeff Kemp will be holding on the extra points, but he's one of the two inactives today for the Seattle Seahawks. So Steve Largent with double duty as Norm Johnson's on for the point after try. It's perfect, and it's all even at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. That was a 70-yard drive by the Seattle Seahawks. Largent with the 23-yard touchdown, and it's tied at seven. When the writers of Motor Trend took the Mitsubishi Galant out for testing, it was an intriguing new import. When they brought it back, it was Motor Trend Import Car of the Year. In today's higher revving and hotter running engines, wear is a greater problem than ever before. Oil breakdown can shorten the life of vital engine parts. That's why there's Castrol. Castrol provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castro, because driving today can be a grind. Castro, engineered for today's smaller cars. A New York City cop on the trail of a killer. From the back alleys of Manhattan to the streets of Japan. You remember me, don't you? This is a New York. Justice falls like black rain. We were together. Michael Douglas, Black Rain, rated R. Starts Friday, September 22nd at theaters everywhere. How do you best harness the awesome power of an Eclipse? Use all four wheels. Introducing the Mitsubishi Eclipse GSX Turbo with full-time all-wheel drive. Sunday, the NFL is on NBC. One of football's great rivalries is renewed when the Los Angeles Raiders battle the Kansas City Chiefs. And it's payback time for Eric Dickerson when he leads the Colts against his former team, the L.A. Rams. Plus regional action. NBC football. It's a whole new ball game. Steve Largent with that tying touchdown is now only one TD away from tying Don Hudson's all-time NFL record. We welcome you back to Veterans Stadium. Along with Paul McGuire, I'm Joel Myers, and the Eagles and the Seahawks deadlocked at seven. Keith Sherman and Mark Hicks waiting for the kickoff from Norm Johnson. It'll be Hicks at the goal line. Barely tripped up. He's out across the 30. At the 31-yard line, the Eagles will put it back into play offensively, and it was M.L. Johnson, the outside linebacker, made the big stop. In Philadelphia's offense, even though they have seven points on the board as a result of a blocked punt, and it took them three tries from the one-yard line to get the ball in the end zone, and then they went three and out. There's the defensive front, Green, Nash, and Bryant. They've been together for many years now for the Seahawks. In the secondary is Harper, Jenkins, Glasgow, and Johnson. Give goes to Tony on first and 10 from the 30. He squeezes it up to the 33-yard line for a gain of three. Buddy Ryan really wanted to run the ball because so many teams had so much success running the ball against the Seattle Seahawks last year. 
final game of the season, the playoff loss to the Bengals last year. The Seahawks gave up 254 yards on the ground and three rushing touchdowns. So that was a point that Buddy Ryan wanted to make very early today. And Randall is not calling his own play. On second, six, he'll give it to Byers on the inside end. Up. Only to the 35 for a gain of a little bit better than a yard. Circling in from the outside linebacker spot, M.L. Johnson making the hit. No one even checked M.L. Johnson. He was on the end of the line, number 52, and it ended up making the play. Eagles looking for their first first down of the afternoon with 45 seconds left in the first quarter. Third and a little bit better than five from their own 35. Cunningham has quick, and the Eagles have a first down with flags down in the play across the 45 up to the 46. He's a great leaper. You can put the ball up 20 feet in the air. There's a flag over there that's going to involve Keith Jackson, whether that may be offensive pass interference or not, I'm not sure. You see quick, just total concentration, goes up and catches the ball with his body. Now, the problem was Hunter, number 23 of the Seahawks, and Keith Jackson were going at it. There were the flags were thrown there. Now, are they going to call offensive pushing off by Keith Jackson? But he wasn't even involved in the play. Here it comes. Pass interference. Number 88, offense. This is a foul, unnecessary roughness. Number 23 on the defense. The penalty's offset. And keep the down. Huh. Come on. They'll bring it all back. They call the penalty on Patrick Hunter, the defensive back for the Seattle Seahawks. And with that touchdown grab, Steve Largen has added to his own consecutive game record with at least one catch in 168 straight games. Eagles now will go to four wide receivers. Cunningham out of the shotgun on third and five. He's got Quick. And there goes Quick. That is level territory for an Eagles first down to the 41-yard line. Dave Wyman had to come from behind to make the hit. The inside linebacker. Young receivers, if you're out there and you're looking at quick, it's just unbelievable. That's the end of the quarter. If you feel that having a big waist is, well, a big waist. It's the right beer now. If you think water that comes from the Rockies is better than water that comes from faucets. It's the right beer now. When you feel tonight's game is headed for extra innings, it's time for the silver bullet, the one that won't slow you down. Like, yeah, it's the right beer now. of tomorrow while you serve your country in the Navy of today. It's time for excitement, time for adventure, time to blast to the past with Quantum Leap. See how it all began. Quantum Leap, the movie, Wednesday. All right, here's Mr. Quick is sitting right here. He's going to come down and he's going to catch the ball, but when he does, just watch his feet after he catches the ball. His feet just never stop moving. Here comes Quick. It's a little slant in. Just trying to pick up the 10 yards. Number 24 is Jenkins. He misses. Now Johnny Johnson comes up. He just puts a move on him to the inside. He's got Carter, number 80, downfield blocking for him, but the, then Wyman, the linebacker, has to go up and make the play. Here comes the first play of the second quarter. It's first and 10 for the Eagles at the Seahawks' 41-yard line. And 
Anthony will make that mark takes on the pitch. In there for Tony. He's got it inside the 40. Let's go for an update now. The NFL Live and Bob Costas. Joel, my man, just a few days after homering for the Yankees in Seattle, Deion Sanders doffs the pinstripes, dons the shoulder pads, goes 68 yards on this electrifying punt return against the Rams in his NFL debut. Meanwhile, for the Lions, Barry Sanders, 70 yards and a touchdown in a loss to Phoenix. No word then on whether Satch Sanders plans an NBA comeback. Mark Higgs breaks tackles and picks up an Eagles first down as we welcome you back to Veterans Stadium and thank you Bob Costas for the update. Mark Higgs in there right now for Keith Byers and making the most of the opportunity. Higgs in, in the last preseason game against the Miami Dolphins really played well. Six to two in the first down department the first 15 minutes of play. 72 total yards of offense for the Seahawks to only 36 for the Eagles. Eagles threatening to score another touchdown though. They're inside the 30. They've got it first and 10 at the 29-yard line. Going deep for Quick. Falls incomplete, even though there was a lot of contact between Melvin Jenkins, the quarterback, and Mike Quick, as Quick was, it appeared, running up the back of the cornerback. Well, you know, the, the, the fans are booing because Quick runs into Jenkins. But Jenkins has as much right to that ball as Quick has. When that ball's in the air, it's either one of them. He didn't interfere with Quick. The interesting thing on the play is Cunningham there, there's no, uh, uh, there's just no one near him just take a look at it now Jenkins has as much right to the ball he did not interfere they're gonna get booze in the home crowd but there wasn't a man within five yards of, of Cunningham that time when he threw the ball Cake stays in the backfield along with Tony on second and ten rifles it for Carter Carter inside the 20 with a first and ten near the Seahawks 15 yard line Beautiful move by Chris Carter. Chris Carter makes the move, and he has Harper out of the way, but he cuts back into him. <laughs> he really did. He had him beat. What are you going to see? Chris Carter, number 80, coming down. Now, watch what he does to, to uh, Harper. Here's the move. He has a beat right here. If he stays out there, he may go for the touchdown. But he cuts back to the inside, and Harper makes the play. The reception good for 13 yards. First and 10 at the 15-yard line. 39 grabs last year. As Jackson, the tight end, goes in motion. Inside give to Higgs. Can't break that first tackle. It's Brian Bosworth with the stop. The Bos missing most of last year with a shoulder injury. He's got something to prove to the fans of Seattle and his teammates as well. You know, the Bos is so quick from tackle to tackle. And it's very difficult to get around the Bos. Here's the boss here. Uh, just watch his quickness as he'll come down the line of scrimmage and make the play on Higgs. And here's Higgs right here. Second and ten in Cunningham. Back to pass into the end zone. He's got Carter. And it's knocked away at the last second by Harper. Chris Carter working on the cornerback Dwayne Harper in his second year out of South Carolina State. Carter almost brought it down. He did have both feet down inbounds. Joel, you know the one thing about Cunningham that just amazes me is the ease with which he throws the ball. There's just no effort at all. And he stands almost flat-footed. When you see Cunningham, just take a look at him. Look at the ease that he throws the ball. It looks like there's no follow-through at all. It's all arm. It brings up third and ten now for the Eagles. At the Seahawks' 15-yard line, one of the slot men is Keith Byers. Over the middle. It goes to Williams. Williams inside the 10. Down to the seven yard line, but he shortened that first down by a couple of yards. First career reception as a member of the Philadelphia Eagles for Henry Gizmo Williams. Are we, we're going to call him Gizmo all day, though, aren't we? All right. <laughs> okay. That's what everybody else calls him. This guy is really put together. He. Everybody looks at him and said how small he is. We have to see him in the locker room yesterday, and he's built like an offensive lineman. Upper half of his body is incredible. It'll be a field goal try for Luis Zendejas. It'll be a 24-yard attempt on the hold of the punter, John Telchik. Zendejas, 19 of 24 last year. 
It's perfect after a high snap and a nice acceptance there by his holder, Telchik. So the Eagles regain the lead. We'll be right back to the Veterans Stadium. The Eagles lead it by three. When it comes to protecting your investment, isn't it worth paying for the real thing? Because only Armor All works like Armor All. I've made up my mind. I'm going to do it. Why shouldn't I? I'm the one who has to look at myself in the mirror every morning. So before I lose another hair, I'm going to the doctor. I know doctors have treatment programs that are proven to work. More guys are trying them every day. I'm not bad now, but I wouldn't mind looking better. Your doctor can really do something about hair loss. So see your doctor or call this toll-free number. The people who count on my brakes are important to me. So the people who work on my brakes are important to me. The people who work on your brakes at Midas are trained brake experts. Remember, nobody beats Midas. Nobody. Welcome back to Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia where the Eagles have just get, regained the lead. A 24-yard field goal by Luis and Dejas and not much offense so far from either side when both wanted to establish that running attack early. And I think the one reason we're saying that is that when both offensive coordinators were talking to us yesterday, they said, we just don't know what they're going to do defensively in the first one or two series of downs. And if you think about Philadelphia, they've only had the ball three or four times. Philadelphia Eagles exactly Paul have had it three times offensively Seahawks ready to get it for their fourth time today they put back Lewis Clark and James Jefferson and good news for Philadelphia fans Lily Sammy Lily number 37 is back in the game and he's all right Zendejas ready to get into it get into it he's got it teed up at the 35 yard line Watching two of the best kickoff men in the NFL today. Zendayas of the Eagles and Norm Johnson. That's why these two teams have such great special teams. They've got such great kickers. And the kickoff team, all the other, the 10 other guys on that team, Joel, they love them because they don't have to worry about screaming down there and getting their brains kicked in. David Craig, the fourth highest rated quarterback in NFL history behind Joe Montana, Dan Marino, Boomer Esiason. Some fast company for Dave Craig. He's got it first and 10 now. At the 20 yard line, that last stat you saw, that is among active quarterbacks in the NFL. Williams and Warner split in the backfield. Largent scans through the two wide receivers. Craig looking for the tight end. It's taken in by Tyler. Across the 45 to the 47 yard line and coming into the game that was a concern for the Seattle Seahawks. You bet it was because he didn't have any idea what these young tight ends are going to do and he found out that they can get open. 27 yard reception. Finals around the NFL an upset at least by many people with the Bears winning by three Rams winning on the road and Phoenix knocking off Detroit as well. First and 10 now for the Seahawks after that 23-yard reception. Or make it a 27-yard reception. First and 10 to 47. Warner with a big hole. Inside Eagle territory. Down to the 45-yard line, a gain of eight. A homecoming for Kurt Warner. Played collegiately at Penn State, grew up in West Virginia. More scores. Great start for the Browns under their new head coach, Bud Carson. Well, looks like Buffalo still can't score inside the 20. <laughs> they couldn't do it all last year. And Denver off to a solid start in the first half over Kansas City at mile high. Second and two. Seahawks with it at the Philadelphia 45-yard line with Largent in motion. Warner slithering his way for the first down inside the 48 near the 47 where he's brought down by Mike Pitts, the left defensive tackle. Seattle, they are having some success running the ball, and they thought they would. And we talked to them about 
when we talked to Craig about the running game, he said there aren't that many plays that you can use in a running game. If there's a vulnerable spot against the 46 defense, it's on the corners because the corners have to play man-to-man. -man. And earlier this week, Buddy Ryan certainly issued a challenge to the Seattle offensive attack, saying they are definitely not going to be able to run the ball. First and ten. They're down to the 43-yard line. Seattle didn't listen to him. Warner again. Jerome Brown was the one who slowed him down to the backfield. He did not make it back to the line of scrimmage. He lost a yard. It'll bring up second and 11. They say that Jerome Brown, the young man of the University of Miami in his third year, he's like a, a little kid. They say if they did a remake of the movie Big, he could play the starring role. Well, you know, when we're talking about Jerome Brown, and, and we asked the other players about it, they said if they put a sign up, wet paint, do not touch, he you would sit down on it. <laughs> <laughs> Second and 11 for the Seahawks at the Eagles 44 yard line. Largent in motion. Water in the flat can't hang on to it. Wes Hopkins, the free safety, is coming over for the coverage. It'll bring up third and 11. You see the drop that Craig took that time? It was a, like a two step drop, and he he's calling Warner in there. He said, I want to I get the ball quick to you he's talking actually talking to blades number 89 now saying you didn't run the right route it's got to be a quick hitch when you see them blitzing I would think it'd be easy to get those happy feet in the pocket when you've got Reggie White and Brown coming in you've got happy feet and you can hear them breathing down your neck third and 11 here comes the blitz Craig out of the shotgun looking for blades it's knocked away by Allen Todd Bell and Andre Waters applying the pressure and it was Waters who was flying through up the middle on the blitz. The blitz was there and, and when the blitz is there, the blitz is actually picked up and that's Waters number 20 coming in. Let me get my, my little thing here and I'll show it to you. Here comes Waters here and he's coming in on the blitz. They pick him up. That's not a problem. But the coverage by Allen downfield, that was the problem. Punting situation once again for Ruben Rodriguez. In his third year out of Arizona, Gizmo Williams waiting for it. This is off the side of the foot of Rodriguez, but it takes a Seattle bounce inside the five. Can they get to it? No, it'll be a touchback. A 44-yard punt for Rodriguez, but only a net of 24 yards. And when we come back, the Eagles will have it. First and 10 at their own 20, leading by three. This way, Mr. Star. Okay. Life with me, Dad's a real scream. <laughs> he needs a star vehicle like my all-new 1990 Cutlass Supreme. <laughs> it's a fab four-door. <laughs> with a hot engine that really screams. <laughs> Again, Mr. Star. Hello, Daddy. This is not your father's Oldsmobile. <laughs> this is the new generation of Oldsmobile. If you like having your life well defined, it's the right beer now. If you think that beer made in the Rockies sounds better than beer made in cities. It's the right beer now. Because when the game's this close, you don't want to drop the ball. So send in the silver bullet, the one that won't slow you down. Cars like... Yeah, it's the right beer now. Next Sunday, the NFL is on NBC. One of football's great rivalries is renewed when the Los Angeles Raiders battle the Kansas City Chiefs. And it's payback time for Eric Dickerson when he leads the coach against his former team, the L.A. Rams. Plus regional action. NBC football. It's a whole new ball game. 
year, the Seahawks defense ranked 24th overall in the NFL. But don't tell the Philadelphia Eagles that so far this afternoon as they only lead it by a 70. They have had problems moving the ball. They've got it now. First and 10 at their own 20. Tony bounces off the first, the second, and gets two yards. He's tough to bring down, just like John L. Williams, although Williams a little bit bigger for the Seahawks. Jacob Green combining with Glasgow on that stop. Rising Clay, they have not thrown the ball to Keith Jackson so far today, and that's one of his favorite targets, the tight end number 88. They also haven't flipped it out in the flat to Keith Byers, who had the second most catches out of the backfield last year to Roger Craig. Second knee. There he is. That's quick. Or make Jackson, rather, the tight end to the 30-yard line, and he's got enough for the first down. See, you heard me. He's open. Right, did you send that one in, Paul? I send that play in. you got to throw to the, you know, rookie of the year. One of the, he's probably one of the, is the best tight end in football. Here he comes off the, off the line of scrimmage. Watch a little break to the, to the middle. Gets in front of Nesby Glasgow, number 22. Makes the catch and picks up a first down. Every time he needs one, all he has to do is go to that guy. Led all NFL tight ends in receptions last year with 81. Pete Hollihan was the closest. The Rams tight end with 59. Play action for Cunningham on first and 10 from the 30. Going deep has a wide open Chris Carter. Down inside the 30. Flags down on the play, though. It's on Dwayne Harper, the flag, because he grabs Chris Carter. It's a holding penalty. They'll take the play anyway. He grabbed Carter as Carter made the move to go back out. Now this is coming after Harper has already held Carter back up the field about the 45 yard line. Carter made a great move. They ran a rollout, kept Keith Jackson the tight end in. Cunningham just waited, waited for Car uh, for Hart, excuse me, waited for Carter to get through, and we got a man down on the field, and that's Shad. That's Mike Shad, the offensive lineman. We'll be right back to give you a report on his progress as we return to Veterans Stadium with the Eagles on top by three. service you deserve halfway around the world come fly the friendly skies look at that cracking guess i used the wrong stain you didn't use water seal stain the only stain with thompson's water seal it seals water out and protects against cracking with water seal stain the next time won't be for a long time thompson's water seal stain NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by the new generation of Oldsmobile. Step into the future now at your Oldsmobile dealer. By Coors Light, pure brewed in the Rockies, the silver bullet won't slow you down. It's the right beer now. And by Castro, engineered for today's smaller cars. Eagles lead it by three, and they've got it. First and ten inside the 30 of Seattle. Goes to Mike Quick. Quick has another first down inside the 20. He's bumped out of the 16-yard line. Melvin Jenkins, Johnny Johnson, the free safety, forcing him out of the sideline. Maybe that is the key, throwing on first and 10. You bet. And this guy, number 41, Keith Byers, not only can he run with the ball and catch the ball, watch the blocking. 
He's out here on a on the linebacker, and he's just sitting there. Watch. He'll stay with him and stay with the linebacker, and that's Maxwell. He stays with him and helps out. They pick up a first down. It was a 42-yard completion to Carter. Now a 12-yard completion to Quick, and maybe that's the answer for the Philadelphia Eagles to mix it up a little more and throw on first down. They've got a first and 10 just outside of the 15 of Seattle. Pitch goes to Tony. Reverses his hand. Inside the 10, spinning for more to the 8-yard line. Anthony Tony. So difficult to bring down for the Seattle Seahawks. Jacob Green, number 79, has him in the backfield, has Tony, but can't make the play, make the tackle. Here they come, right into your face. Now you'll see Tony cut back. When he does, there's Jacob Green, number 79. All he can do is get a piece of that leg. His legs are moving, and Tony ends up picking up almost eight yards on the play. Second and short. Second a little bit better than two. That was a career high 502 yards last year for Anthony Tony. Carter goes in motion to the same side as Quick. Fires wrapped up by Bobson. Back to the original line of scrimmage. He is at the eight, but it'll still bring up third and a couple. <laughs> We're talking to Randall Cunningham yesterday, and we, said, we asked Randall, said, Randall, if there's one play that you hate to run, what is it? He said, it's not on the goal line for the one yard sneak by the quarterback. He said it's third or fourth and one short when it, when Buddy Ryan sends in, okay, Randall, run it. He says, no way do I want to do that. Big third down for the Eagles. They lead by three. It's third and two at the eight. Tiny batter for Carter. Touchdown, Philadelphia. this pass is watch what Cunningham does he just lays it up in the air Harper's out there trying to cover and Carter makes makes the play yeah, Cunningham just stand just flip it up in the air does he like it yeah he likes it <laughs> he likes it Zendejas in for the point after try he's right on target once again and the Eagles have their largest lead so far this afternoon. Four minutes and 51 seconds left in the first half of play. An eight-yard touchdown pass from Cunningham to Carter. The Eagles by 10. I like hanging around, getting down, walking the dog, doing the town. I like everything I got right here. Rainbows! And cold coarse beer. It takes a part of this country as cold and clean as the Rockies to brew a beer as pure and natural as Coors. Brew refresh, just like you like it. Capitalized cold Coors with a friend of yours. A Rocky Mountain legend, an American original. We recognize how important every 800 caller is to your business. We recognize that. And if for some reason there's a disruption in that service, we know you can't afford to be out of business. We have a new AT&T 800 assurance policy. If you're not getting 800 calls for any reason, if it's an equipment failure, if it's a problem with the network, it doesn't matter to us. What matters to us is getting your calls to you. We guarantee we'll put you back in service to a working telephone line within an hour. That's what the assurance policy does for you. They were the biggest men I'd ever seen. They lifted my mama's couch like it was a toy. I ran to my room, but it was gone. But my mama was still there. If you die, will they have to say goodbye to your house as well? Ask an Allstate agent about mortgage protection and make your family a promise. We'll help you keep. As we drove away, I watched my house get smaller and smaller until it wasn't there anymore. U.S. gold medalist Roger Kingdom, world record holder in the high hurdles, Cuba's Javier Sotomayor, the first man ever to clear the eight-foot barrier in the high jump. Next Saturday, they defend their world records in a clash of continental champions. The World Cup Track and Field Championships on NBC Sports. 50 of those 80 yards on the Eagles' scoring drive were receptions by Chris Carter as Ed Dejas kicks it away to Lewis Clark and James Jefferson. It'll be Jefferson at the one. A 
across the 25. He's wrapped up near the 28-yard line. Other scores around the NFL on this first Sunday of the season. Minnesota with an impressive start at the Metrodome. And look what the Patriots are doing to the Jets at the Meadowlands. Cleveland taking care of Pittsburgh in the other early going. And Miami getting the lead for the first time over Buffalo. Fifth possession of the first half of the Seahawks offense. They've got it first and ten at their own 28-yard line. Largens the motion man. Play action on first down. Joyner keeping up with the running back. Seth Joyner doing a good job on Kurt Warner. This is one of the reasons why Buddy Ryan says that that man right there, number 59, Seth Joyner, is probably the best linebacker in football. Now watch what he can do. Not only can he rush and make tackles, but here he is covering man-to-man -man on Kurt Warner. Kurt Warner has no chance to get this ball. If that ball was catchable, Joyner would have had it. Again, they'll have to go out of the shotgun on second and ten. Four wide receivers in the batter. John L. Williams, the only one to the backfield. The quick out to Clark is good for the first down. They work it in front of Izell Jenkins, the cornerback on the far side. First and ten at the 39-yard line. All right, when we talked about man-to-man -man coverage, now you're going to have Jenkins one-on-one -on, -one on the outside on Clark. Here comes 84, Clark. Jenkins is 46, and watch this. It's man-to-man -man coverage outside. Clark makes the move, gets down 12 yards, comes back to the ball, first down. Easy, isn't it? Reception good. <laughs> it, it sure looks that way on the quick cut. Reception good for 11 yards. Belted at the line, John L. Williams, but he spins off that one with flags down in the play and takes it past the 41-yard line for a gain of about three. Mike <laughs> Pitts really delivering the blow, though, at the line of scrimmage, and he's got to be wondering, what does it take? Do you see Jerome Brown, number 99? He's called. He's not only a player, but he's a referee. <laughs> Holding call against Seattle will bring it back 10 yards. It'll be first and 20 now for the Seahawks. Jerome carries his own tape with him. I want to know where he puts it when he's done with it. Number one pick for the Eagles. Three seasons ago. Ninth player selected <laughs> in the draft in 87. <laughs> Clyde Simmons taking care of the equipment for Jerome Brown. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jerome can't throw very far. First and 20 for the Seahawks. They're back at their own 29-yard line. Pressure comes. Craig on his way down, back at the 20-yard line. Clyde Simmons is so quick from the outside. Mike Pitts also there. Yeah, but the man who makes the play is Pitts. Is Pitts, and you're going to see him. He's coming from the outside. I believe this is him. No, he's going to be out here a little bit further. He's going to come from the outside over here, and he's the man that really makes the play. Simmons, Simmons actually makes the tackle, but Pitts is the man that's going to force it. Here comes Pitts all the way around the outside. He forces. Reggie White is inside. And here comes Simmons to make the play. That's teamwork. It's now second and 29 with the ball back at the 20. Three minutes and 40 seconds left in the first half. The late Warner doesn't fool anyone. Out to the 23-yard line. Where he's tripped up by Seth Joyner. Interesting call on second and 29. But actually, the way the Eagles are stunning, the only man they really have to beat on the draw play is Seth Joyner. But I think I picked on somebody else besides him. A reminder to our viewers that we'll be selecting the Budweiser most valuable player of today's game at the conclusion of this afternoon's contest from Veterans Stadium. I'm Joel Myers, along with Paul McGuire. 305 left in the first half, and the Eagles lead it by 10. Not the ideal situation against the 46, and right now the 46 defense with a nickel package in there. Largent off his fingertips. He had beaten the defensive back. He was working on the nickel back who just entered the game, Sammy Lilly, and it looks like Lilly is hurt once again. And he hit another, I think this is now second base. Largent comes down the field. Lilly 
loses him for a second. The ball is just overthrown a little bit, and Lilly pops right back down on his knee. The same knee, Paul, the right knee that he had popped out earlier. No, it's his left one, Joel. That's the one he hit, the first one, and he's got that thing bent. It is going to be his left leg again. Don't forget at the half, Bob Costas and O.J. Simpson with all the scores and highlights from around the NFL. They are helping Sammy Lilly off the field for already the second time this afternoon. Eagles lead it by 10, and they are ready to get the ball back once again. It should get it, barring a turnover, an outstanding field position. So now he's hobbling on that left knee. To update you on Mike Shad, the offensive lineman who was helped off the field for the Philadelphia Eagles, we received word he left with heat exhaustion, and they have already taken him to the locker room on a golf cart. He's been replaced, and we'll see Dave Remington coming in the offensive line in the next series for the Eagles in that left guard position. Rodriguez in to put it away. Here's on goal line. Henry Gizmo Williams. Gizmo's got room. Not anymore, though. Gave up ground, and he's dumped back at the 36-yard line. Eugene Robinson, the free safety, the reserve corner of free safety for the Seahawks. First one down there for Seattle. So Cunningham and the offense back on the field. It'll be their fifth time that they've got their hands on the ball today. That last pass to Largent, I mean, it was almost a perfect pass. We're talking to Steve Largent yesterday. This is his last year. I mean, there's just no question about it. It's not maybe or if something happens. He just said, I've been very fortunate 14 years of being healthy, and I want to leave that way. It's a class act, that guy. First and 10 for the Eagles at their own 36. Tony on the pitch. Up to the 40 and near the 41 yard line. Stopped there by the inside linebacker Brian Bosworth. We've just received word that Sammy Lilly has strained his left knee. Doubtful whether or not he'll return today. Gate of about six for Anthony Tony. Tough kid. He, he sprained it on the first one on a punt return in the first quarter and went back in there and played on the kickoff team and as a nickelback. Second and short five. Tony slips, trying to make his cut. He loses a yard. And we have now reached the two-minute warning at Veteran Stadium in Philadelphia. Steve Largent with the only points of the day for the Seahawks as they trail it by 10, with exactly two minutes remaining in the first half. I like quiet little towns like Crested Butte. Catching a live one out of the shoot. Fireside chats, mountain air, hot dogs, and cold Coors beer. It takes a part of this country as cold and clean as the Rockies to brew a beer as pure and natural as Coors. Brew refresh, just like you like it. Have an ice cold Coors with a friend of yours. A Rocky Mountain legend, an American original. Listen to the heart. Chevy Beretta Sport Coupe, designed to help you look better, engineered to help you drive better, and priced to let you live better. Four scores on this first Sunday of the NFL season. The Minnesota Vikings at home by 14 over the Houston Oilers in one of the best matchups of the day. The LA Raiders every, everything their way. In the early going with the San Diego Chargers. Cleveland right now clobbering the Pittsburgh Steelers. A tussle down in Miami between the Bills and the Dolphins. We welcome you back to Veterans Stadium. I'm Joel Myers along with Paul McGuire. Big third down coming up for the Philadelphia Eagles. They want to put their two-minute offense in gear. They're looking at third, a little bit better than five, close to six yards. The Eagles lead it by ten. They got a one-yard touchdown run from Anthony Tony. A 24-yard field goal by Luis Zendejas. And an eight-yard touchdown pass to Chris Carter. The only touchdown of the day for the Seattle Seahawks. A 23-yard pass from Dave Craig to Steve Largent. And on third and long, the Eagles bringing in an extra wide receiver. 
after one of the few times this afternoon. So they basically go with the same 11. Greg Garrity comes in as one of the slot men. Jackson, the tight ends, the slot on the other side on third and six from the 40. Flags down the play. Cunningham will pick up the first down and then some. Getting a block inside the 40. They say he stepped out of bounds. Keith Jackson. Inside the 35. On, excuse me. Joel, Keith Jackson on Wyman. And what a block. And I think they have movement by the Philadelphia Eagles. But Keith Jackson to come back to protect his quarterback. That's what makes Randall Cunningham so dangerous. He's got great speed. He's a little 4-5. Ken Reeves, the guilty party. When we talk about Keith Jackson, here he is at the top of the screen in, in, the, in the slot, and now watch him come out. He's in the pattern, the flags are down. When he sees Cunningham running, his job now is to get to him. Now watch what happens to Wyman, number 92, when Keith Jackson gets there. Oh, excuse me, I thought it was Wyman. It wasn't Wyman, it was Jefferson. But he got not only Jefferson, but Jefferson got Wyman. It's now third and a little bit better than 10, back at the 35, with Cunningham out of the shotgun. He's got quick over the middle. It's good enough for the first down, near the 46-yard line of Seattle. They go to their hurry-up offense, or will they use a timeout? Yes. Cunningham, with a full complement of three, will use his first. He's got two timeouts remaining for the first half. As we return to Philadelphia. The heartbeat of America. For today's work, today's world, Chevrolet will introduce more new trucks in 1990 than anyone else anywhere. Nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. Today's truck is Chevrolet. The heartbeat of America. Today's truck is Chevrolet. It's a matchup of two divisional champions from last season. The Eagles winning their first NFC Eastern Division title since 1980, the first in the history of the Seattle Seahawks franchise. It started back in 1976. So many similarities fall between these two teams. Sack leaders from their individual conferences as well. 10 and 6, 9 and 7 records for the two teams last year. Division records identical and home records the same as well. And they said the only reason they lost the game last year was special teams. First and 10 for the Eagles at the Seahawks 46 yard line. As Cunningham goes from the shotgun again. Over the middle looking for Jackson. And it's tipped away by Patrick Hunter. Saving play by Hunter. And Jackson is down. The injury timeout is charged in the last two minutes. Second timeout for up here. Eagles have to take the timeout due to the injury to Keith Jackson. He Let's takes see a what shot developed from down Eugene field. Robinson, number 41. Now there's Hunter making the play. Watch this. Robinson comes in and just drills. Pressure on Cunningham as well in the offensive backfield. Well, Cunningham will stay in there because he has all the confidence in his line. But number 55, Brian Bosworth, who's waiting, his job is to check Cunningham. And right at the end, he puts his helmet right in his face. Good is, hit. Is that what you'd call the, the spy on the Seahawk defense on that play? They want to have a guy spy on Cunningham. They don't want him moving around. Jackson appears to be okay. If you've just joined us, game time temperature 93 degrees an hour before kickoff. They took the temperature down to the turf of Veterans Stadium, and it was 120 degrees. So a lot of players in the second half may be suffering from heat exhaustion before it's all over. After the shot that Robinson put on Keith Jackson, you said he appears to be okay? <laughs> He's a load He's at 6'2", 250 pounds in his second year out of Oklahoma. Robinson, you have to remember, is only 185. They bring in David Little, the tight end, in the slot. Cunningham on second and 10 for Byers, and it's incomplete.
fans here at Philadelphia. They wanted another penalty flag in the secondary. You have to feel for these fans. You know, a lot of people take shots at the fans of Philadelphia, but take into consideration the Eagles have been around since 1933. 56 seasons of football and only 19 winning seasons. Well, they're enthusiastic about this one. This one's sold out and it's shown here in Philadelphia. And they should be proud of their team. They've got a super defensive football team and one of the better quarterbacks in the National Football League on offense. Keep third down for Cunningham and the Eagles with a minute and 25 left in the first half. Third and 10. Floating it for Byers off his fingertips. Contact, but no flags. As James Jefferson was providing the coverage. Byers looked over the wrong shoulder. He had to turn around two times and he took his eye off the ball. When you do that, you, you see Randall Cunningham, he has all the confidence in the world in his offensive line. There really is no pressure on him. And when you see Byers downfield, he turns two different ways and he lost sight of the football. You gotta turn around, Joel, and face the ball. John Telchik in for the punt. Led the NFL with 28 downs inside the 20 last year. And James Jefferson, the deep back, inside the 10 for Seattle. Telchik hanging up a high one. Jefferson calling for the fair catch will let it hit. Taking the Philadelphia roll down to the 15-yard line. So that's where the Seahawks will have it with 65 seconds left in the first half. And they still have their full complement of three timeouts remaining. Bob Costas and O.J. Simpson, NFL Live with all the scores and highlights coming up. The East Seahawks get it back. They're down by 10. Dave Craig has not had a lot of opportunities to set up in the pocket today. And most of the time when he's throwing the ball, it has not been on first down. It's when the Eagles can basically, as they say, pin back their ears and really charge at the quarterback. And it's also mostly in a hurry. <laughs> there, there isn't much time. Warner, the only one in the backfield, as they go with their two-minute offensive drill. Two wide receivers to each side on first and ten on the Seahawks 15. Little flare to Warner and Joyner with him every step of the way. It's only good for two. Two-yard gain the completion. They'll go without a huddle. I think they want to try to get out of here and regroup. Underneath, they go to Lewis Clark. He's got the first down, getting a block downfield. He's out of bounds in front of the Eagles bench at the 45-yard line. Eric Allen forcing him out. But that stops the clock now with 37 seconds left in the first half. Plenty of time for the Seahawk offense to put some points on the board. David Craig, he's, you know, talking about a smart quarterback. He's, the, the runner is still running. Clark is still running with the ball, and he sees him get out of bounds, but he wants to find the official to call timeout if he's tackled inbounds. They get to save that timeout after he went out of bounds, and it's first and ten for the Seahawks outside of their own 45-yard line. Two wide receivers to each side for Craig. Going deep for Clark, who's wide open. Just off his fingertips at the 20. And beating the cornerback, Eric Allen. That could have tightened things up in a big hurry at Veterans Stadium. Well, Clark went down the sidelines. And that, I, I told you before, once you get into this, this defense, what happens to you is you're one-on-one. -on -one. Eric Allen just had no chance to catch up with Clark. And Clark had touchdown. Had the ball been on target. They call it ground chuck. Chuck Knox, the head coach of the Seattle Seahawks, loves to run the ball. It's been well documented. He had so many great years with the Los Angeles Rams, took the Buffalo Bills to the playoffs as well. Second and ten now, the 45 of Seattle. Wanted Largent. And the Eagles secondary man wanted offensive interference. Eric Everett defending on that play. He thought Largent was pulling his arm down. Well, Everett goes for the ball. The guy was walking, watching behind him is number 20, Waters. What Waters is doing, instead of going to attack the ball, he sits back and he waits. He's there on the 30-yard line. You see him just waiting? Everett went in and knocked the ball away. So far this afternoon, 
The Seahawks have thrown the ball 19 times. They have run it only 12 times from scrimmage. Not the way Chuck Knox wanted to operate in the first half of play. Third and 10 from the 45. Craig for Blades. Off his hands inside the 25-yard line. So the Eagles defense stopped Seattle after that big game. And if they could have gotten at least one more first down, they would have had an opportunity to at least get Norm Johnson on the field, one of the best field goal kickers and one of the longest legs in the NFL. Instead, they'll have to punt the ball away. He has a strong leg. And we were watching before. He was kicking the ball for 52, and it looked like they could have gone 65. He's got a career best of 54 yards, but we won't see him in this half. As Ruben Rodriguez, a 41-yard average last year, will be punting from back at his own 30-yard line. Let's see if they give Gizmo Williams a chance to touch the ball. Only 22 seconds left in the half, and it's a fake. Rodriguez floating it out. It'll be short the first down as it's taken in by Nesby Glasgow. Al Harris, longtime member of the Chicago Bears, making the hit. You know, and here now all of a sudden it turns around to the point, Paul, where the Eagles get a pass and a first down. They can get another field goal. Now here's a play where Rodriguez and, and the offense of Seattle should have called this off and kicked the ball. Reason being, Philadelphia, they were sitting in a prevent defense and not rushing the punter, and they were just waiting for pass or run. So the first trick play, the first gadget play for Chuck Knox does not work this afternoon. And another opportunity for Randall Cunningham of the Eagles offense. Philadelphia with only one timeout left in the first half, though. Cunningham down to Carter. The reception good inside the 30-yard line. And the Eagles use their final timeout. So a chance for Philadelphia to pick up three more points. The ball was bottled on Carter's way down. Let's take another look to see if it was a reception. Yeah, but Keith Jackson said it was. Here comes the Carter. Now the ball hits here. He bobbles the ball, but he gets his hands underneath it. I'm going to tell you what. I guarantee you they got to be looking at this thing because it hits the ground. It looks like it hits the ground. He doesn't get his hands totally underneath it. Randall Cunningham looking to his left. And Jackson coming back to Carter on this side. As soon as he sees it, the catch calls timeout. They say they got six seconds on the clock. But I know they're going to review this thing. No doubt. And I wonder if it's inconclusive. It does look like it could potentially be ruled as a trap because the ball does touch the ground. It looks like the ball does, and I don't think Carter got both hands underneath the ball. He had one hand under it, but the other one didn't get there in time, and it looked like from the angle we had, here it comes again. Now take a look. The ball hits Carter right here in the, in the chest, and, it, and the ball comes down. Now his right hand is underneath it, or left hand is underneath it, but his right hand... Is determined to be an incomplete forward pass. His right hand never got there. The replay official this afternoon is Chuck Everly. We can see what we can see it from this angle. Here's the bobble here. Now the left hand does get underneath it, but the right hand doesn't. The ball does hit the ground. It hits right on the zero at the 30. So it'll be Randall Cunningham in the Offensive unit back out there. Zendejas was setting up for a field goal attempt of about 35 or make that about 45, 46 yards. Philadelphia had requested a timeout. The fact that the pass was incomplete stops the clock by rule. I am rescinding the timeout. Philadelphia still has one remaining. The Eagles have another timeout left. Now can they pull off a quick out and use up only five seconds, or do you just... Go to the end zone. Go down, look for the tip drill, possibly. The quick and Carter and Johnson on one, on three men, Hail Mary deal. Trips to one side for Cunningham on what should be the final play of the first half. Floats it up. It's taken in. But quick is out of bounds. As time expires in the first half of play at Veteran <laughs> Stadium. A little bit of everything in the first 30 minutes of play as the two teams head to the halftime locker room. 
So the Eagles offense coming alive in the second quarter of play. And we didn't see much offensively, though, Paul, from the Seattle Seahawks as they had to throw it more than run it. And I think you're going to want to see, especially Philadelphia, going to try to run the ball a little bit more in this second half. It's halftime in Philadelphia. The Eagles leading the Seahawks by 10. <laughs> 